Hey everybody, welcome to today's video on migrations. I'm your host, Laura Kirkland. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have the great honor of being a part of the team here at Elixir. And if you're not familiar with Elixir, just a quick background for you. Elixir is a specialized marketing consulting agency that orchestrates seamless customer interactions, enabling B2B companies to understand their customers and make data-driven decisions, resulting in predictable revenue and loyal customers. Now joining me today is Alan Yukestad. Alan is a project manager here at Elixir and he specializes in all things migrations. He has a proven success record of walking our clients through the stickiest and most complex migrations in marketing automation. And he, along with the rest of our services team, serves as their trusted guide, assuring all details are planned and executed. Alan, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Laura. Happy to be here. And thank you to everybody for joining us on this journey today to explore migrations. Yeah, we're excited to talk about it. So uh, let's just jump right in. As an agency that works with clients on all types of marketing automation migrations, we understand the questions that someone like you has when you learn you'll need to complete a migration. So today we're going to cover where to begin, how to approach the project and even getting in the right mindset to tackle the big questions. We're going to cover the major questions to start considering, including resourcing, planning, timelines, and downtime. And then we're going to walk through the major phases so you can uh, see exactly what happens and when and begin putting the big picture together. So whether you're driving the migration project or you're impacted by another department driving the migration, like getting a new Salesforce instance, which is common, um, you need to be prepared and understand what you're facing. And we're excited to share this knowledge with you today because sooner or later, as a marketer, we will all likely come across a migration. It could be your company was acquired and now you need to merge with the existing platform of the other or you're bringing two platforms into one and you decide what to keep, or you're just getting a brand new instance of your marketing automation platform. Um, whatever that is, you have a new reality to forge. These are all very typical questions. So I'm gonna hand it over to Alan and he's gonna start with the first big question that you're gonna wanna answer. Thanks, Laura. Yeah, so where do you begin? Where to start? I'd say the best place is really where do you want to go with your automation instance? Um, so I think what is your future desired state is a great question to be asking. And, you know, to back up from that, how do you get there? What are your goals? This should be a in my dream Marketo instance, I want to dot, dot, dot statement. It should really align with corporate goals, company processes, and whatever gets you excited about marketing automation. And now is really the time to paint that future picture and get after it. And so backing up from goals, you know, what builds up to your goals. I'd say consider your processes first. Analyze what isn't working now, as well as what could be improved or fixed. We'll cover this in a little more detail later, but at a high level, maybe think about what's no longer working for your team. Is your marketing to sales process outdated? Do you know for a fact that you're passing over only qualified leads to your sales team? Or is your data dirty? Are you capturing all the data you'd like to? So these are all great questions to ask, you know, to build up what needs to be in the new instance or what do you want to be in the new instance? Or, you know, even if you're going through a merger or an acquisition, and this is how this migration conversation is starting, you're, you're likely going to have to rebrand. That component will need to play into the migration. And so you have to consider all of these components. Also, additionally, think about what processes or tools your team no longer leverages in the marketing automation industry and landscape, there's currently new shiny tools all the time. We buy them, but are they still working for us? Do we have any old tools that we don't need anymore? So now is kind of the time to consider at a business level, what do you need and what you don't need? Once you have all this information gathered, put it in a playbook. Use that to communicate with your team on your decisions that you've made, even the pieces that you've decided to not move forward with, at least document that you've had those conversations. Now, these areas are all important um, to get your Marketo instance set up and configured, and you'll really need to not only get it set up and enabled for your current needs, but also any dreams of yours or goals of yours in the future. And so that kind of brings us to our next major question, which is resourcing. And Laura's going to walk us through that. So here is where 
we need to ask who are the key players in a migration? And we're gonna dig into this because you're gonna to wanna to understand this well in advance so you can begin letting your team know what to expect. So the first person and key critical role is your marketing automation admin. And this is, this is probably likely you, um, but this is your project lead, day-to-day -day point of contact. They are involved heavily in all phases throughout the project. Your next is your marketing decision maker, and they're handling business level decisions surrounding the migration and heavily involved in the strategy phase. The next is your sales and CRM admin. They're gonna work closely with the marketing decision maker to make sure that the outcomes of the migration align with the sales practices. That they may handle some CRM sync tasks if an agency is not involved. And so they're gonna be involved in anything sync related and some of the data related activities. Next you have IT. And so they're gonna handle technical cutover from old to new marketing automation instances. And they're involved in the technical migration and the actual cutover to the new. And the next is your marketing automation agency, if you have one. And they are critical for strategy and project management for all areas involving the marketing automation. And they'll provide expertise and support to the, the marketing automation admin as well as your entire team is needed. And then if involved, a CRM agency, and they will handle everything Salesforce related, CRM related. Um, and so that's their major role that they're gonna do there. And Laura, even in some cases through a migration, we do see that additional players are needed um, kind of on this playing field. And so, you know, sometimes legal needs to be involved. Sometimes you need a web or graphic designer to be a major player in the migration as well. So um, this is definitely kind of the core team, but there are additional players that occasionally need to be included depending on complexity of that migration. Perfect, so now that we've covered that, let's talk timelines. Yeah, thanks Laura. So timelines, I'm sure you're all wondering how long does a migration actually take? You've been giving this deadline and you have a lot of pieces to play with. What does it actually take to get you there and how long does it take? And so this can really vary, but typically I see migrations taking from anywhere between three and six months. There, it's really a ballpark estimate, and this really does depend on timelines and resources, but I'd say at least three months for any migration, as there's many discussions that need to occur about future state of the new instance that shouldn't be rushed. And there's a lot of components that need to happen before, during, and after, and so you can kind of think of a migration as a net new instance implementation that you're getting a head start on because there are pre-existing pieces. Regardless though, everything should be perfect. So we will go more into detail into these stages of a migration here in a bit, but from a top level, um, like I said, there are pre, during, and post pieces, and each has specific components. None of these should be rushed if you do want a perfect end product. All stages can vary in length due to complexity or scale of the migration, um, as well as the future desired state. So like we painted that picture previously, you know, shoot for the stars here and really make sure that what you're doing now during the prep phase of the migration and the execution and post gets you to the future goals that you never re were really able to get to. And so that should be the goal here. One of my favorite quotes, and Laura my lap, but this is the inner project <laughs> manager in me, is coined by Tom Peters, he's an author, and he says, if it ain't broke, fix it anyways. Your upcoming migration is likely your one chance at an overhaul of everything that currently exists in your instance. If a process is working fine, could it be working more flawlessly? Do you want to claim ownership of something that's just okay? Or do you, like me, want to take everything to the next level? So now that we've kind of talked about, about how long a migration takes, let's, let's dive into that a little bit more and talk about downtime. Now as fellow automators, I know downtime is a terrifying word. We like all of our processes to be automated and running with minimal human input but yes, there will be downtime <laughs> and it will be okay. During a migration, there will be downtime between the existing process in the instance and that cutover. With a very well-planned and executed migration project though, downtime can be as little as a few days. In a migration I recently completed with a client, it was as little as three days. So that's really not that much lost activity or data in those three days, but there is a technical limitation and I'll speak to this in a little bit of 
system processing. So migrations can absolutely go sideways here and the devil truly is in the details. But like I said, with careful planning and clear communications, there's no reason why your migration can't be straightforward and successful. Like I said, with technical limitations, if you're trying to import hundreds of thousands of new records into your new instance, and there's you know hundreds of data points on each one of those records, that's a lot for a system to process, and you simply cannot rush that processing. It's just a nature of the beast with a migration. So go into this with the mindset that there will be some limitations. We can't be perfect all the time, but we can get you as close as possible. Additionally, you'll want to make sure that you recreate as much as you can in the new instance so that it's ready for that go live. You want to make sure that everything is in place um, so that you can you know, run programs, you can cookie activity, you can process data. Um, so here, you know, everything at that cutover point will be collected in the new instance, and so you really need to be prepared for that. So speaking to that, you know, how do you prepare for that? How do you minimize this downtime? Um, three days, I think that's a great goal for anyone. It's not possible for everyone. Um, but yeah, let's include that in the plan. Let's shoot for that as a goal. And so really, careful planning and careful execution of things like data, asset, creative, and technical migration pieces really do help to optimize overlap. Like I said, there's a lot of pieces that happen pre, during, and post-migration. So let's do as many of those simultaneously as possible so that when it comes to pushing that big red button at go live, that there's very flawless or seamless or minimal effort. Really with this, all teams need to be aligned here. It's truly a team effort as you saw all those players as Laura spoke to. And so with that, you know, aligning that many people, that many processes, there's often pitfalls. So I'm gonna to talk to some of those for you guys just to give you, from my experience, some of what I've seen through some migrations that I've done before. And so communication is key. And constant and perfect communication is a goal for all businesses. And, but really in a migration, this is so, so, so essential to success. With internal teams, you know, has communication been clear across them? Are all internal teams aware of their role, of the technical specifics they're, they're being asked? Um, do they know if there was a recent change? Were they updated? They need to know all of this as that can impact the timeline as well as that cutover. And if agencies are in play, are they ready? Your agency point of contact wasn't necessarily at your lunch with your colleague last week when you were discussing this. Are they aware of that discussion? Do they know that someone just went on maternity leave? You know, if that person's a core role in the migration, that may impact that final timeline, that final cutoff. So again, clear and constant communication, I cannot stress this enough, is so, so, so essential to a migration as there are so many dependencies across all of this. Really, that, that brings us to the pitfall at technical cutover. This is what I consider truly the migration in air quotes. Really, um, this is where the slip often occurs because so many pieces and players roll up to this one point in the project that if everyone is not aware of everything they're supposed to do and if anything slipped, you really have to be on your toes to kind of accommodate any sort of change. You know, if migrated assets aren't ready, or if there's complications in the data migration or, you know, cooking settings on the new website or tracking code, you know, this is the peak of the project. So any sort of complication is likely going to delay your ascent to a successful cutover. So you really need to be wary here of does everyone know what they're supposed to do and when? And really, this is when you're saying goodbye to your old instances, programs and processes. Everything should really be prepped and primed for this moment. And all the migration leading up to this point has built up to the technical cover. So again, all team members or agency members really need to be hand, all hands on deck. They need to know exactly what they need to do and when. So grab your Americano that week and hang on. <laughs> <laughs> or multiple. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So now um, we've covered resourcing, planning, timelines, and downtime. Let's take a look at what the phases of the migration look like. Go ahead, yeah, thank you. Um, there are three main phases of a successful migration project. Strategy, the actual migration itself, and the post-migration. Again, these are just very high level for the purposes of this video. Um, we understand these are complex projects, but just to give you a ballpark idea of what to expect. Yeah, absolutely. So like we've spoken to, you know, this is your, your future goals. How do you get there? Back it up. You start with strategy. So, you know, again, think about what is your desired future state? 
where are you now versus where do you need as well as want to be in the future? And so the steps that we recommend, you know, we highly enforce and we do this with all of our clients. We always execute a full pre-migration assessment with clients and develop a detailed playbook addressing the changes needed for all these critical data points and settings in the platform, as well as, you know, we're going to document what's going to be carried over in the new instance. So there's quite a few discussions that happen during the strategy and lead up to the creation of this playbook. And, but really, you know, just like moving into a new house, this is your opportunity to start fresh. The rooms are all clean and empty and you can arrange them however best suits your needs. And you need to know exactly what goes where. And so that's what this strategy is. So what's the desired future state? What's the timeline? We spoke to that. What are critical dependencies? Who's involved and when? So in this playbook, we'll outline the business benefits, recommendations, and steps needed for each piece of the migration. Our clients value this playbook because they know basically everything that needs to happen, why we're doing it. We truly document all of that as well as how it's going to happen. We share this with the internal teams so that they can review, even if it's not a team that's you know, responsible for a specific piece, it's still good for them to know what IT is going to be involved in and when, and when their asset migration may come into play. So with that, that brings us to the migration itself. So step one in the migration, take the tasks and the items from that playbook and decide exactly where they need to be done. So the old instance, the new instance, both, there is quite a bit of overlap in between specifically data portions of a migration that has to happen in the old and the new instance. The majority of this is included in the playbook, but we'll definitely want to create a visual plan that's digestible by all teams in terms of what pieces are happening when and who's responsible. As a project manager, I'm a very visual project manager, so I really like this visual plan because everyone can very easily digest it without any of the technical jargon of what's happening and when. So, you know, during this migration phase in the old instance, you want to prepare data, you want to prepare your assets, clean, delete, archive. This is when you're really looking at what needs to be moved, what doesn't. We've talked about that during the playbook creation as well, but this is really the time when we're getting into it. So, you know, within a specific program, do you need those um, audit lists or reports from 2013 that are just sitting there? Let's clean it up. Let's optimize as we go. You want to make sure that everything is perfect when you get there. Um, you know, just like that moving example, remember when you moved three years ago and have a bunch of boxes still in the garage during a migration, we don't want any of those boxes to come to the new house. And that old couch in your basement will want to vacuum it and probably reupholster before it even gets into the new house. <laughs> Truly, this is the time to take anything that's existing that's not perfect or desirable in your eyes and clean it up and get it to the new instance. And document the processes you think you're going to need to reference in the future, but only migrate them if they're essential to your current automation activities. You may have built this great program three years ago in your instance, but if you're not using it anymore, do you truly need to migrate it? That's a lot of time and resources needed to execute that piece. So if you want to reference it in the future, take some screenshots, type out the process, get yourself some point of reference so you know what occurred. Because as soon as your instance expires, the old one, it's gone. So this is really the time when you need to document all of those pieces. You want to enable the new instance so that you can start moving in, quote unquote but also configure the technical pieces in the new instance so you're set up for success in the moving process. Which room in the house are you moving boxes to? You don't want to go through all that extra work and then have to redo everything. So really in this strategy, in this migration piece, we want to be as tactical and calculated as possible to ensure success. You'll want to sync any other MarTech systems like a third-party analytics tool or any other integrations into your new instance so it's ready to go as soon as we hit that button and go. CRM sync. This is so you need to set up, you know, metadata needs to flow. You need fields, you need objects. How can you migrate assets if you don't have custom fields available in your new instance, et cetera? So you'll really need all of these to be able to get the most out of that overlap in between the old and the new and the pre, post, during pieces of the migration. So very important to, again, have this strategy in place to be able to just walk through this migration as you've already had these discussions. Then you'll migrate your programs. You'll get them ready for that cutover date so that pushing that big red button is truly easy. And then when you activate the programs in the new, at that point, all you'll have to do is just let them run. So everything will be set up for that. 
And then truly decide that cutoff date. You really need to have everything in place so you can see the future um, of that cutoff date. Sometimes you can have a desired future cutoff date. Um, and unless you execute everything perfectly up to it, um, likely it's going to ship. And so just have an open mindset there about those timelines. And then you'll migrate that data in, enable the CRM sync, switch tracking codes, et cetera. And then your new instance will be live and all your data will be flowing in. Nothing will be collected or touching the old instance anymore. And so really you'll be truly utilizing the new instance and you know your migration might not be done. You might still have things you wanna do in the new instance, but you shouldn't need to reference anything out of the old instance at this point. And with that, communicate to everyone on when this is all happening, what's involved, make people aware of planned downtime. If someone needs to you know, switch a tracking script on a website over a weekend, let them know weeks, months in advance where possible. And so with that, you know, the migration is now complete. And so Laura's gonna walk us through kind of post-migration, what that looks like. Yeah, so first take a deep breath because you made it. <laughs> and this is, uh, now you're gonna be run begin running your campaigns and monitoring your new instance to ensure it's functioning as intended. And a great plan, that detailed playbook that Alan mentioned multiple times, will make this step actually very minimal because you've put all that time and thought and careful planning in beforehand. Um, at this point, uh, you can start looking at implementing additional improvements you identified in that playbook. So new scoring, a uh, life cycle, alignment, those types of projects that are gonna take your marketing automation and your team to the next level. Uh, you're also going to monitor your third party tools to ensure data is flowing through properly and then also um, establish uh, re recurring reviews, 30, 60, 90, 120 days, um, just to make sure that everything is functioning as you had intended. And, and a pitfall to avoid here, if you didn't, and, and Alan had mentioned this earlier, I just want to reiterate, if you didn't migrate everything and not everyone does, usually for timeline and budget reasons, Screenshot those old programs in the old instance, document it. Because uh, once it's disabled, you can't get it back. So anything you might possibly need to reference, make sure that you grab that. So those are the three major phases of a migration that you can expect. And so now you have the knowledge you need to start approaching the planning of your migration. Uh, if you found this useful, we encourage you, please share this video with your team, have them watch it. Anyone else who might be wondering, what to expect or what to start thinking about in preparation. And, and Alan, I was wondering, you know, just to close this video out, what, what's one piece of advice you would give our audience to get into the right mindset to prepare for a migration? Absolutely. I would just encourage you all to think of a migration not as a burden, but an opportunity. Run with it with a positive mindset. And while there will be quite a bit of work to do, what we outlined today was, was no small feat. The potential of the future state of your automation platform should excite and engage you towards that finish line. Awesome. Well, that wraps it up for today. Again, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you so much. We hope you found this useful. If you want any help on your upcoming migration, please get a hold of us. We're at elixiter.com. You can find us on social. And I just want to say thanks again and have a great rest of your day.